the No Fate channel, checking in. On this episode of Dad's Home Gym, I am gonna be talking about refurbishing dumbbells and we're gonna discuss whether Flex Seal, the liquid rubber sealant coating, you know what I'm talking about, that stuff that you've seen on TV that can repair a boat cut in half is good enough, is strong enough, is worthy enough of helping refurbish and repair your old dumbbells. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, please hit, hit, hit that red subscribe button. On this Dad's Home Gym series, I typically just review a piece of home gym equipment. Whether you are getting a steal of a deal on the used market for dumbbells that are gonna need some love and attention, or you just have your own dumbbells at home that have seen better days and need a little bit of TLC, um, I thought today's video would be ideal because there's many of you looking to refurbish and fix up old dumbbells. So I use these eight pounders that I had at home and I'm gonna go over the process that I use, the cost, and we're gonna ultimately see how they turned out to help you decide if it's something that is gonna be worth your money and more importantly, worth your time if this Flex Seal is going to last and going to deliver the performance that you expect. The first thing we're gonna do is actually unwrap this tape and see how they turned out. And here is the final product. Um, and of course, I chose eight pound dumbbells for proof of concept measures only. What does that mean? It means that if it works with an eight pound dumbbell, it's gonna work with a hundred pound dumbbell because the process itself is gonna be exactly the same. However, as you can imagine, the heavier the dumbbell, the more work involved it is, the more difficult it's going to be to maneuver when painting and all that good stuff just because of the weight of the heavier dumbbells. So let's go back to the beginning and take you through the process. So I started off with these eight pound dumbbells that have been, they're probably a decade old, okay? They were chipped, they, the paint was chipping, peeling. Um, they were a mess like your dumbbells probably are. The only thing is they didn't have any rust. I did a whole video on rust removal. I'll link it in the description of today's video, but it's a two-step process. Uh, spoiler alert, you just soak these 100% in vinegar, white vinegar, does the trick, soak them overnight, take them out, steel wool them, wash them, dry them, and then you get basically where I started, which was a clean dumbbell um, that had seen better days. The next step that I used was a primer. I primed the whole thing top to bottom, and I did two coats to make sure it gets fully primed. When it comes to spray paint, um, we tend to be a victim of our own uh, anxiety, right? So when it comes to spray paint, we think more is better and we often never wait for the coats to fully dry. Now here in New England, it's spring, so the weather can fluctuate, but it's not that warm. You really wanna get your surface, if anything you're gonna spray paint, like your dumbbells, warm. So you want to pick a really sunny day. Ideally, if it's a nice warm summer day, you put these out ahead of time to really kind of get that heat warm up. And that's going to allow the, the, the spray paint to stick to the dumbbells quicker, dry faster. You're going to get less globbing. You're going to get less pooling. And if you don't have the heat, then maybe try to create it with a heat gun if possible. So I, I primed these. I did two coats top to bottom. Um, and I used a Rust-Oleum primer. You can use whatever spray paint primer you want. I will say it is just ends up being difficult kind of getting these spots in here, um, especially down here. It just ends up being difficult to try to get while still staying about six to 12 inches away. You don't want to get too close to your object because again, you're going to get that pooling. And even though you think more is more, less is more, and you're better off using less and just doing more coats make sure that your coats are fully drying. And I decided to do white on the handles because I one, I wanted the two-tone and two, um, I wanted to have something that was still gonna be hard and not necessarily rubberized per se in order to still be able to wrap, wrap them if I wanted to use wraps. And again, these are eights, so it sounds kind of funny to th talk about wrapping an eight-pound dumbbell, 
but I'm assuming that you might be wrapping like the 50s or the hundreds or stuff like that. So I wanted to have the two-tone. I wanted to keep this surface hard. I ended up using a Rust-Oleum spray paint that is meant for refrigerators. So it's like a, it basically dries like a very hard refrigerator surface. Um, but any type of Rust-Oleum, strong Rust-Oleum paint would work. Any color you want would work. And we'll talk at the end of today's video on whether you could spray paint the handles all black with this Flex Seal. So once this was done on the handles, I was then ready for the Flex Seal. So then you had to tape up the handle. And that's the other issue with regards to spray paint is it gets everywhere. So if you don't tape it very well, you're gonna have problems and it's gonna be an issue and you wanna really be careful with how you tape in order so that the tape comes off easily, which is one of the mistakes that I did not do. I had like that blue painter's tape that I just happened to have around the house. So I used that. Could you use that if you already have it? Sure. If I did it again, knowing full well that the taping process is so important, I would probably go get that frog stuff. I'll put a photo of it up here that's like more expensive. But I mean, assuming price-wise, the primer was about $6. One can did these two easily with tons to spare. Um, so $6 for the primer. I would buy the, the tape, the frog tape, which is probably going to be another $6. Again, I'll put the photo and the, the price up here. And then it comes to Flex Seal. This cost $13 for this can. I try to find it cheaper because I'm a cheapskate. Could not. Everywhere sold it for the same price, whether you bought it online, whether you bought it at Home Depot, Lowe's, even Target. $13. It does come in white and it comes in clear and I think it might even come in red. They're actually putting new colors on. What is it? For lack of a better term, it's literally liquid rubber. It's literally like spraying liquid rubber and in fact when you do start spraying it you're gonna think you're doing it wrong because it's gonna look wet. Like it's gonna look like beads of wet but it actually dries a lot better than it looks when you initially spray paint it. What I used in order to be able to do one coat fully at a time was I put this on top of a brick. Hopefully I'll have a photo to show you but I put it on top of a brick once it was taped and then I was able to spray it and roll it around on the middle brick which had um, like a piece of plastic, a small piece of plastic underneath so the handle didn't get chipped. So I was able to roll it forward to expose the parts that I had not painted already and then roll it back. I will say very much like the primer and the spray paint, the spots that are the most are the toughest are the inside because you're trying to get the inside but not really kind of get on the handle which is obviously an issue which is why you really want to go with the better masking tape, painter's tape, the frog tape, whatever it's called. How many coats did I use? I used three coats. I let each coat dry 24 hours. And again, I can't say it enough. You want to make sure it's fully dry because there were a couple spots where I was getting aggressive with it and you can see it bubbled up and it pooled just a little bit. And I think, honestly, um, I probably should have gone with lighter coats and just more of them. So I used three coats and it, they actually came out really good. How much of a can do I have left of that $13? I probably have a quarter of a can left. The truth is, I would probably go with four or five coats, okay? If you, you're in the middle of the summertime, it's hot out, you can probably get two coats in a day. Um, I'd probably just take one can, take a pair of dumbbells, and just go until it's empty in terms of the number of coats. The more coats you have, the better these tips are going to be, and the more rubber feeling they're going to be. At three coats, I can feel like a little bit of, like kind of like a rubber texture, durability, um, but clearly not the type of rubber that comes with a brand new dumbbell when they're rubber coated on those hex style dumbbells. I actually love how it came out. I, I really do. I think the color looks good. The best part that came out the best, I have to say, is this um, Flex Seal. This Flex Seal stuff is good and I'm not surprised it costs so much per can. So all totaled, this project cost $20 and I don't think there's a way around it. I think if you're gonna be doing dumbbells, you're only gonna get one can per pair of dumbbells just because the big, especially on those bigger dumbbells, it's not gonna go far enough and you really wanna get it a good job if you're gonna put the time in. And now it's time for Fate of the Union where I tell you my final thoughts on Flex Seal. This bad boy is getting a certified B+. It delivers on performance. It dries better than I thought. It feels better than I thought. And it even comes in different colors if that's your bag. The only reason it doesn't get an A is cost. Unfortunately, you're only going to get one pair of dumbbells out of a $13 can. And if you've got a lot of dumbbells, that can add up pretty quickly. 
Flex Seal is definitely a great option for someone that is looking to spruce up their existing dumbbells that have seen better days, much like myself, or you just get a great deal on a bunch of old dumbbells that are used. So if I did this again, what would I do differently? What would I put right what once went wrong? The truth is, if I had a dumbbell like this that has no knurling on the handles, I would do the whole thing in Flex Seal. I think the product is that good, I think it's that durable, and I think it's going to last that long that I wouldn't bother doing a two-tone, do the whole thing in Flex Seal. The only issue being how did you actually put the dumbbell to, to spray paint it and then having to flip. When you do that flip or when you put it on its side, you got to make sure that that entire side is 100% dry. 100% dry because if it's only dry to the touch, when it's th the weight of itself is going to ruin the paint, ruin the finish. If you do have knurling on your handles, then I would say as long as that knurling is good, just remove the rust and try to leave the knurling clear it, because that's what you really want is that nice clear knurling that we all know and love. If the knurling is beyond recognition, then I, again, I would just go and flex seal the whole thing. This stuff is that damn good and that damn impressive. And now I know why it's $13 a can, because it works. If you got any questions regarding Flex Seal, regarding refurbishing dumbbells, drop them in the comments below. Hey, you're still here and you are an absolute legend, my friend. If you did come this far, do me a favor, give this video a like, hit that red subscribe button. And the last favor I want to ask of you is to please use my Amazon affiliate code in the description. How does it work? You click on the link, you buy whatever you wanna buy on Amazon. Um, and then they take a few pennies out of Jeff Bezos's billion dollar pockets and they put it into mine. It helps pay for the electricity and my time on making these videos. Hopefully you found it informative as usual. Thanks for watching and don't save anything for the trip back. This channel is dedicated to my life as a father of two wonderful children and it centers around health, fitness, and all of the tricks and tribulations that I go through to try to be a great parent to my children and still accomplish my own personal goals.